What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you guys back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at my ultimate guide on how to pick and select the right fabrics for your backpack designs. Any accessories apparel designer will know that designing clothing and designing backpacks and other types of accessories are kind of two completely different things. Whereas with clothing, we want comfort. We want flexibility, we want stretch, we want breathability. With backpacks and other types of accessories, we may want something completely different. Yes, we may want some of these things, but ultimately we want durability. We want resistance against the elements. So you're probably scratching your head thinking, well, this is true, but what are the options available to me? Well, watch this video and you're about to find out. We already know that the prerequisite is resistance against the elements. We know that we need our backpack materials to be durable to be water resistant, to be able to stand the test of time, right? The last thing that you wanna do is buy a backpack and have it fall apart on you on the second, third, fourth, or fifth wear, right? After all, they are expensive, and when you're designing a backpack, you need to make sure that the materials you're selecting are going to give your customer the best possible experience. What are the options available to us? Well, we'll start off at the very beginning. Nylon is going to be one of your best bets and actually most backpacks that you see on the market, especially in the outdoor space, in the sports performance space, are going to be nylon based. Nylon is a synthetic fiber, aka it's man-made. It's actually a mixture of different polyesters or actually a mixture of different plastics, not polyesters. They are melted down. These plastics are mixtures called polyamides and they're melted down and that's what is turned into nylon. Nylon is extremely popular. It's durable, it's very silky, can be high quality, but it does have one caveat, especially when you compare it side by side to polyester. Polyester is exceptionally well known for its UV resistance, whereas nylon isn't. So if you're gonna have a backpack that you know is going to be out in the sun consistently, then nylon might not be your best option. The next need to know material is going to be, and it may come as no surprise, it needs to be polyester. Polyester is exceptionally similar to nylon. We've obviously outlined the differences, but I find that polyester has an edge, especially in the durability department. Polyester is exceptionally water resistant. It's wrinkle free. It's very, very durable. It is extremely good at repelling UV. It's strong, it's lightweight, it's chemical resistant. And for most backpack manufacturers, if you get a good quality polyester, you're going to be able to have an exceptional product. The issue with polyester is because it's so widely available, it's so easy to make, that you typically see a lot of poor quality polyesters on the market. So buyer beware, polyester does not necessarily guarantee a quality product, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily disguarantee that. So make sure that you're doing your due diligence and you're buying a good quality polyester. Next up is a little bit of an oddball. We have polypropylene, which is again, it's a plastic based compound. And one of the beautiful things about polypropylene is how durable it is. It's chemical resistant, it's exceptionally tear resistant, so it makes a very durable option. Also, it's very easy to work with. Despite having a high melting point, it can easily be melted down and shaped into whatever fibers you need. Yes, it's not as popular, but it is a great option to consider. So if you do see polypropylene, consider the hand feel that you're going for. With polyester and nylon, you might get something that's a little bit more of a familiar touch to your customers versus polypropylene, which might have a little bit more of a polarizing feel to it. Next up, we have a very, very old school contender. We have the canvas fabric, and this is a little bit of a wide term, but when you think of canvas, this is a legacy fabric. Think of the types of backpacks that your parents or your grandparents might have carried. And essentially what canvas is, is a type of weave. It's a very dense weave that creates a thick fabric that's extremely, or tends to be much more heavier weight than its contemporary counterparts. This is why we don't typically see canvas being used in a lot of hiking equipment or outdoor equipment, right? Where you wanna keep the, the actual weight of the garment or the accessory down, canvas is not your best option, but it has made a resurgence, especially in recent years especially when it comes to more lifestyle focused brands, right? Some that come off the top of my head are Herschel, Felraven, they definitely use a lot of canvas fabrics. And it has this almost vintage aesthetic or vintage vibe that has definitely made a resurgence. Also, with recent technologies, we've been able to use fibers that are more and more lightweight. So not only can you benefit from having the durability of canvas, the structure of canvas, but you can also bring in the lightweightness of synthetic materials as opposed to cotton, which was what used to be used in the past. 
in order to get the best of both worlds. I still wouldn't recommend it if you need to keep the weight of the backpack down, but if you want something durable and you want something that has a little bit of a nostalgic feel to it, then canvas is always a great option. Next up, we have the ripstop fabric. And this specific fabric can either come as a polypropylene, nylon, or polyester blend. One thing to understand about ripstop is it's not a type of material. What ripstop is, is a type of weave, similar to how canvas can be selected in different fibers. Ripstop itself can come in polypropylene, polyester, or nylon. And each of these versions, so the ripstop version of nylon is always much more durable than the non-ripstop version of nylon. And one of the or one of the best benefits of ripstop fibers or ripstop fabrics are that they cannot be torn or it's extremely difficult to wear them out. Why or how does this happen? Well, it all comes down to the weave. When it comes to ripstop weaves, you have a traditional weave that is interlaced with a wider grid. So if you've ever seen a ripstop fabric, right, the telltale sign is this woven fabric that has this grid like pattern to it. And this grid like pattern comes because on those grid intervals, they're using longer versions of the fibers and stronger versions of the fibers that add to the tension resistance, to the stretch resistance, they add to the durability. And honestly, it's a phenomenal technology. So if you want to bring in some military grade durability to your fabrics, then definitely use a ripstop weave. Now we move on into the next section. We've sort of discussed the generic fabrics that you see on the market, but there are a ton of branded options, right? These branded options come with the confidence in the brand that is actually making them. One of the best fabrics that we see on the market that stands for durability, quality, and actual like long-term maintenance is going to be Cordura. Cordura is a brand with a wide portfolio of fabrics now, but it started off in the 1970s with just a single 1050D, I believe, nylon thread that was actually created using a very specialized air jetting process, right? That air jet process allowed us to create threads with insane amounts of durability. And Jansport, obviously you guys have heard of Jansport, was one of the first mass manufacturers to actually pick up that brand and use Cordura exclusively into its garments and into its backpacks. Moving on, we have Corda Nylon, which is the sort of South Korean version of Cordura. One of the major sort of drawbacks of Corda Nylon versus Cordura Nylon is that Corda nylons are actually, now they become licensed, right? So the company that makes Corda nylon, which is called Colon International, actually licensed out the technology to a ton of different manufacturers in the East and allows them to create these fibers. It's a great alternative to Cordura, but it's not as tightly controlled in terms of the quality and what is actually output from these different factories. So if you want to ensure quality time and time again, then Cordura is going to be a better option as a hallmark of that quality. The last but definitely not least is Ballistic Nylon, originally developed by the company we know and love called Dupont. It has a very aggressive and military sounding name and if you think that it has military origins then you're probably right with that. Originally Ballistic Nylon was developed as an option to be worn by soldiers in World War II and the idea originally was to develop a very strong and durable nylon that would protect soldiers against shrapnel. Unfortunately it wasn't able to quite achieve that. Yes, but what you did come up with in tandem to that was a very durable consumer focused good that could be pretty much put through anything that a typical customer would put it through and come out unscathed on the other side. And really what makes Ballistic Nylon so durable is the specialized type of weave where most fibers that are woven are woven on a one by one grid. Here we have a two by two grid, which means for every two threads of horizontal warps, there's two threads of vertical. What that allows is for a denser weave and a more durable weave and ultimately a weave that's going to stand the test of time and that you can definitely put full confidence behind. Okay guys, to recap quickly, my ultimate backpack guide, right? What are the fabrics you should definitely be considering? There's a ton out there, but the main ones you should always be looking at are nylon, polyester, polypropylene, any type of canvas weave, any type of ripstop weave, you should also be looking at Cordura, you should be looking at Corda, and finally, you should be looking at Ballistic Nylon. Any one of these options is going to be a great bet. And I'd love to hear from you guys if you feel like I missed any key materials out there or which of these materials that I mentioned are specifically your guys' favorites. I always enjoy hearing from you and I enjoy having that conversation. Also, 
check the link in the description. Let's just say you're looking to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation call. If you're looking to take your backpack designs to the next level, you want some of my personal advice on what materials to use, what materials to avoid, what details to add, well, check the link in the description. I hold limited one-on-one -on -one consultation slots every single week, and we can hop on that call if you guys are interested. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.